Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, interesting stuff. First up, Bitcoin miners earn over $1 million per hour. And that's a revenue increase of 185% since the 2020 halving. And what this tells me is that there is big business behind the doors of just holding cryptocurrency also. Continuing on with the same theme, publicly listed Bitcoin mining operation see shares skyrocket. Riot blockchain market cap reaches 1 billion. And we're gonna take a look at two to three other mining operations and one that I'm actually investing in as far as the stock market goes. And finally, more bullish news, a physical crypto bank opens in India. 14 locations offer in-person banking, lending, crypto exchange. And the question has to be asked, how far behind is America as India, which just legalized cryptocurrency not too long ago after it was banned, now has 14 locations for physical banks for cryptocurrencies? Before we get into that, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today, it is December 30th. It is uh, 1 p.m. El Paso, Texas time, and Bitcoin is on yet another tear. Looks like we are almost hitting the 29,000 mark at 28.8, 20% uh, for the week. And uh, it's just been amazing growth. I mean, ever since, um, actually, it's been like this, like this for like a past month. And I think what was going on, it really all started with Grayscale. It seemed like all the different companies that are, have been buying up Bitcoin, including uh, PayPal and MicroStrategy and Mass Mutual and, of course, Grayscale, they, it seemed to me like they had this like this unwritten rule, which was don't buy more than the daily allowance. Well, just about a week ago, uh, Grayscale said, you know what? Forget you guys. We're going to leave you in the dust. And they bought up 13 times more than the daily amount that is produced for Bitcoin. And I think that's uh, really what's going on with the institutions. Now it's just a buying frenzy. And uh, once we hit 30,000, uh, that's when I stopped dollar cost averaging Bitcoin. Because if you've watched my videos before, I have a theory that uh, Bitcoin is going to go to around 100, 150,000 in 2021. And then it's going to come right back down to around $30,000. So I'm not going to dollar cost average after that. So uh, we're almost there. And, and once that happens, then I will allocate funds to other uh, cryptocurrencies digital assets that I have in my portfolio. And uh, I'll just ride this one out. Uh, this is going to be a huge year. I think 2021 is going to be enormous. The only thing that, that I really worry about, one is scams. Uh, that's one of those things. And um, two really is the SEC and what they're doing uh, with Ripple and XRP. Now, I think Bitcoin and Ethereum are pretty much safe uh, because Jay Clayton, the SEC chairman that just stepped down and he was the one kind of responsible for kind of spearheading this this whole uh, lawsuit against Ripple. Uh, he came out in 2018 and said, look, Bitcoin's on a security. And then they kind of alluded to uh, Ethereum the, the, the exact same way. So I'm not really concerned about that. But there's some other things uh, also stellar I'm kind of looking at uh, to where they could say, hey, we can go after these types of things. Now, I'm not trying to spread FUD. I'm just saying that that's what I see. I think Ripple is a special case uh, for what they're going on because it was two things. Uh, one, there's a problem with, with securities and maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But the second one, I think it's the much bigger part is uh, the leadership or the CEO and uh, co-founders of Ripple and how they were selling off uh, their uh, XRP. I don't really want to get into that part, but I think that is an issue. But again, uh, I think this, this market's going to do very well in 2021 and I can't wait to see what happens. So Ethereum looking at, man, 750, 2.8% for the day, uh, almost 19% for the week. Again, tether tether, nobody cares eh, in a free fall. And, uh, you know, I had just recently sold all my XRP because I want to take a massive loss. And just to reiterate what happened, I don't think people, I think people just saw my thumbnail where I said I'm selling all my XRP and they went out of their mind, especially the XRP army. So if they would have watched the whole video and uh, seen what I did, I don't think there'd been that much of an issue, but apparently it was. So I'm going to break this down real quick. So what you do is that you sell all of your losses for the calendar year for tax purposes. So I sold all my XRP at 9 a.m. Got it? And then five minutes later, I bought some back. So you can do that. That's called wash trading, but it doesn't apply in cryptocurrency because crypto is a special piece. It is actually concerned, uh, considered property. So in this situation, that is what I did to help me out with my taxes. I'm a small business owner and I need massive tax deductions. So that is what happened. Um, 
So again, let me reiterate that. So, because I, I think people just don't understand. I sold the XRP for tax reasons so I could get a tax break. And after that, I bought some back. So when people say, oh, you got weak hands and you say you never sell, look, that is, <laughs> I, I can't make any simpler. I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I need tax breaks. That's what I did. So let's move on. Litecoin, 1.4%, uh, 12% uh, uh, up for the week. That's pretty good. Polkadot, uh, we just did a, a nice little video this morning about um, uh, Polkadot and staking and things like that. And some people said, you know, uh, they said, hey, this is really easy. You can crack and you can do it in two minutes. And some people are like, hey, why do you do that? Just use a wallet. You can use a wallet. Some people don't want to do that. Uh, that's why there's different options for everybody else out there. But check that video out. Uh, pretty interesting and makes things super simple. Polkadot, you can stake it for like 12%. It's crazy. Bitcoin Cash up 2%. What else is up? Wrap Bitcoin. And it's amazing that, you know, you've got Bitcoin 1, Bitcoin Cash 2, Bitcoin SV 3, Wrap Bitcoin 4. Um, those are, there's four in the top 20 and they're all rated Bitcoin. So, what you know, what do you know? Uh, let's see. Stellar. Stellar's down. I can see why. Uh, Monero. That's weird. Monero's usually up. Celsius Network, just an absolute tear. I mean, they're going to hit $6 in no time. I remember buying Celsius under a dollar, and now here we are. 81% for the week. I mean, that's just unbelievable growth. Is it sustainable? Eh, maybe. We'll see. Uh, Theta, another one of the great buys. 10.6% um, for the day. 40, man, 46 for the week. That's amazing. And we're going to see these numbers again and again and again, especially in 2021. So don't be surprised. And that's really about, four, wow, 14% for Uniswap. At back to above four dollars. What a yo-yo. Zilliqa, um, gotta really look into that. <laughs> I say that every time, and I never do. Uh, I know it's a great project. I don't know. One of these days. All right, let's move on to today's top story. So before we do all that, I forgot one thing. Need to give away the winners for the 12 days of Christmas. We did everything all the way until the 24th and 25th. And I had the people at the respective companies draw these names at Voyager, Trade the Chain, and Market Rebellion. So for the 24th, for the winner, for the $100 Voyager, it is going to Ryan Alchemist. And he puts Voyager, will PM address if I win. Ryan, just do me a favor. Go to danteacherscrypto.com. Click on the contact tab, send me an email with your information, and we will set you up with that $100 worth of Voyager token. Next up on the 25th, we had the three for one. It wasn't even listed here. We're giving away two Trade the Chains memberships and one year-long membership to Market Rebellion, where you can go there to learn about crypto trading. And the last one, which is a surprise sneak in, we give away a Shield Folio. So for the two people for the Trade the Chain, they're going to be Crypto T, congratulations, you won three months to trade the chain, as well as Mark Vozo. You guys are both winners of Trade the Chain. Again, just go to Dan Teaches Crypto, click on contact, send me an email with your information, and we'll get you all set up with Alex Maschioli and that great platform where they use sentiment analysis. Mark Rebellion, get technical analysis. Trade the Chain, you get uh, sentiment analysis. You put them together, unbeatable. And then lastly, for the Shield Folio winner, it's going to be Megabytes Mining Bar. So again, you know, at DentageousCrypto.com, send me an email and we'll get you all set up. So again, thanks everybody for uh, making this a success for 12 Days of Christmas. We'll do it again in about another year. So all right, this was a great story. Bitcoin miners earn over a million per hour. And I, when I'm looking at this, I mean, we all know what's going on, right? I mean, come on. Uh, we know that Bitcoin's going to be big this year. The only question is how big. I have a... a a, a frame of around 100,000 to 150,000. Some people say 300,000. Some people say 500,000. Some people say a million in 2021. I don't know. I hope I'm wrong. I hope it goes to like a half a million. That'd be awesome. But uh, who knows? But there is so much money in this space that is rippling over into mining, mining operations, stocks. There's a lot of ways to get into cryptocurrency. And this is just one of those ways. So what's going on here? Well, this, according to Glassnode, BTC miners are currently earning a million per hour, meaning an increase of 185% since the halving happened in mid-May. I had no idea how profitable it actually was to be a miner until I took a look at this. Now, uh, I know some miners and it's not easy. And it's not that's not my forte and not my thing, but that's why it's so lucrative. So if you're into those types of uh, mining operations, sure, go ahead for it. I don't know how anybody would do that without actually hooking up with a, a mining pool, but uh, sure. Uh, but again, tons of money in here. And there's going to be a way we're going to talk about in just a second 
about not about making money investing in the cryptocurrency, but not directly in the cryptocurrency. So continuing on this story, the last time miners' revenue was hovering around such highs was in July 2019, adding that block rewards were twice as high than today, obviously because uh, we just went through a halving in May of 2020. Overall, class note estimates Bitcoin miners' total revenue stands at $13 billion, making it a heavyweight industry within the crypto sphere and an attractive one for businesses looking to invest in the crypto mining industry. I think this is one of those things that people are going to start to really take a look at. When we look at the big picture about what is going on, it's not just the cryptocurrencies and what they can do in the digital assets and you know, you, using Bitcoin as a store of value, using Ethereum, building everything on top of that, using VeChain as, as, as tracking different things you know, throughout the, the globe. There's a lot of things that, that can be done. And when you are an investor, you're looking at, well, what, how can I get into this? Well, cryptocurrency is kind of uh, unstable as far as the price action. I don't know what's going to happen in six months. Nobody does. But I do like this mining industry. Maybe I'll invest some money into that. Not a bad idea. So finishing up, I didn't know this, but uh, the latest generation mining rigs prices have gone up 35% since the beginning of November. The observed price increase comes as Bitmain and MicroBT are reportedly sold out until May 2021. So that's how you know industry is making huge strides. There's just not, not enough to go around. And that is a shortage. Supply and demand, just like Bitcoin. As of past time, according to BitInfo Charts data, Bitcoin average transaction fee remains at $8.70, still off from the highs reached on October 31st at $13.15. And I got to tell you, I'm glad that we are not in December 2017 because back then people were still touting uh, Bitcoin as like a currency, cryptocurrency, and using it to pay for goods and services. That's not, it's, it's not going to be that. Let's just be honest. People talk about, ah, oh, there's these second layer solutions and lightning, and I just about fall asleep when I hear it. I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. I, it's, it's a store of value. And let's just stick with that narrative. It wasn't what Satoshi had in mind, but it is what it is. And that's what we're going with. That's what the in, in, institutional investors are doing. Nobody's using their Bitcoin to buy coffee. No one's using Bitcoin to buy a car. Well, maybe a car. I don't know. But I mean, day-to-day -day transactions, it's not going to happen. At least not for a long time until someone figures out something better. But for right now, store of value, everybody's happy. Great. Let's put a bunch of money into it. Go to the moon. Fantastic. Let me know what your comments are in the comment section below. But this, I think, is the real money winner. And it comes down to publicly listed companies and what people can get into as far as the stock market. Because let's be honest, stock market's gonna it's gonna bomb this year. I think there's gonna be a lot of problems. We can't keep up this this breakneck speed. But with cryptocurrency coming along, I think people can find an outlet. So public list of Bitcoin mining operations, see shares skyrocket. Riot blockchain market cap reaches 1 billion. And I had heard about Riot from the guys over there at Market Rebellion. And they were talking about this when I was in their show with Alex Maschioli on his channel. And they kept talking about Riot, 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 Riot. And I was like, I don't know what you guys are talking about, as usual, because usually what they're talking about goes over my head. But uh, with this one, I'm like, what is so big about this? Like, oh, well, man, it's like, you know, it's like a mining company and they're doing really great and people are going to buy a bunch of stocks. I'm like, yeah, sure whatever. And sure enough, they're right yet again. So this is what's happened. The US-based firm Riot Blockchain's market valuation recently attained a 1 billion capitalization. That's not easy to do. And here they are doing it in a very short amount of time. A number of other Bitcoin mining business operations have seen colossal demand for company shares. The company has recently captured a 1 billion market cap after trading for 3 bucks, around 3 bucks, in November which is just, you know, a month away, shares climbed, oh, 3x, and are now trading above the $15 range of December 29th. So imagine you're in the traditional market. You don't know anything about cryptocurrency. You have no idea. Like, that's stupid. But a lot of people are buying into this thing, so I'm going to get into it. And you buy in at $3.47, and within a month, you're at 15 bucks. 15 bucks. That's insane. In the traditional market, you would have lost your mind. Of course, here, it's like a Tuesday, so nobody cares. But for this one, I mean, fantastic. And this is what I'm talking about as far as making big strides. So I think that moving forward, there can be a lot of different companies that people can actually get into, but not be into cryptocurrency. So Riot's not the only publicly traded listed Bitcoin mining operation that has seen shares swell immensely in value. On December 11th, Hut 8 shares 
I guess the same type of thing. We're swapping for a buck 46 per unit and I have increased 154% to 371. And this one is the one that uh, my friend George told me about months ago, Mara. And I have been investing into this through Robinhood. I've been dollar cost averaging, just like I do with the cryptocurrency. I've been putting 25 bucks a day and it's been pretty great. So the publicly listed firm Marathon Patent Group Mara has seen shares jump in value by over 156% since December 11th, when shares were swapping for 463. I remember those prices. At the time of publication of Marathon's shares are trading for 1187. Marathon is another firm that just recently announced the largest acquisition of next generation miners when it settled a deal with Bitmain to buy 70,000 ant miners for 170 million. This is great news. And uh, when my friend George told me about it, I'm like, uh, I don't really deal with stocks. I buy Amazon and I buy Tesla. That's pretty much about it. Cause that's, I believe in both of those and I have a business on Amazon. So why not? But when he talk, talked about this, I'm like, that makes sense. And it just made sense to me. And, uh, I'm going to link these, uh, the description of this company in, uh, underneath this video. But I mean, they've got a pretty, a lot of good branches. They're based on Nevada. They probably incorporated over there. They're also in Quebec and they have a, a stable farm in South Dakota, probably cause it's cold. And it uh, looks like a pretty good one. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you this is what I do. And this is what I invested into. So Riot or Marathon, sure. But I just see this as a, as a great opportunity for people to really get exposure to crypto without doing crypto. And I think it's going to be big. But there was one more thing that I thought about, which was there's a company called Layer One. And Layer One is here out in West Texas where I'm at. And they are doing a ton of Bitcoin farming or Bitcoin mining. And uh, Peter Thiel is the background. I want to know just what the heck is going on with him. And I saw some pretty bummer of a news. Uh, the CEO of Bitcoin mining startup Layer One resigns in a settlement replaced by ex-president. I'll link this as well, but it got a little ugly between uh, the top brass. And that is the problem, I think, with some of these companies is that people get in the way of the company. And I think it was the, the most genius aspect of Satoshi Nakamoto just to disappear, even if he's alive. And I will just tell you this, because he is not around, uh, everything works great for Bitcoin. If, if that guy was revealed himself, it's like, hey, it's Pete, I'm the Satoshi. I'm like, ah, oh, that sucks because now we know the guy and they can go to the guy and they can you know, probably even like sue. So, but that guy doesn't exist. And it's, it was just a genius move. So when you know you have something like this and then you also have something like with ripple and they do all their whatever they're doing watch blockchain backers video if you want to learn uh, a little bit more in the insights of that case he breaks it down beautifully um i think people get in the way with satoshi just disappearing great now we don't have all these issues that you see in all these companies so anyhow that's it for that so let me know what you think in the comment section and off to our next piece so this one was good and it made me realize just how slow uh, america is uh physical crypto bank opens in india these 14 locations offer in-person banking lending crypto exchange fantastic so if you don't know um india had actually the central bank of india had gone to the supreme court and they had banned uh, cryptocurrency. And they said, hey, we're going to shut down, shut down these exchanges. And they did it. And then it, it was actually put forth by, you know, to the Supreme Court of, of India and uh, for the reserve, excuse me, the reserve shut them down. They came back and said, hey, this is illegal. You can't do this. And now it's flourishing in India like nothing happened. That's amazing. So we haven't shut anything down yet, but yet we can't seem to get things together. And here's India. Uh, doing the right thing. So good for you guys. So everybody who is in India listening to the channel, welcome. Uh, you guys are doing the right thing. Congratulations. So crypto bank Unicus has begun rolling out physical branches in India. The first branch opened in Jaipur, the bank announced Monday. I think I said that right. Unicus is initially opening its services online and through 14 branches across Rajasthan and Gujarat by January 2021 and plans to rapidly expand 200 branches by the end of 2022. That's amazing. So now they're going to open all these things up. They're like, you know what? Let's fast track it. Let's just roll this out and just push. And then we'll, you know, just kind of decrease the amount of banks we have for these new better banks, which do everything a typical bank would do on top of cryptocurrency digital assets. Win-win. Unica CEA Dinesh Kukraha. I know I did not say that right. This states this will allow us to build, scale, and offer customized financial and crypto products 
for the local Indian markets. The next 13 branches will be rolled out between 4 and 22nd of January. So you're looking at mm, two to three weeks. And the 14 branches, including their addresses and phone numbers, are listed right here. So this isn't like a pie in the sky type of thing. This is something where they're like, you know what? We're going to do this. Here's where they're coming. Here's the phone numbers. And uh, expect this to happen. That's amazing. So congratulations, India, for doing the right things and getting things done. So, all right. So, uh, more great news. Uh, I mean, really can't get much better than this. <laughs> Unless you're an XRP holder. Sorry. And that's all for today. So, uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like these types of videos, I mean, two more going to pop up on your left and right. And I'll let YouTube do their magic. Also, for all the winners, don't forget, go to danteachescrypto.com. The link is in the description below. It's the very first one. And click on the contact tab contact me email and then i'll send everything out to you and that is it all right thanks a lot appreciate it see you on the next one